How's it guys and welcome back. This is that Meg guy. Today we are going to be talking about different times of pulmonary edema. So this is something that I've seen being quite confused sometimes because we tend to see quite a lot of pulmonary edema. It can be misdiagnosed and sometimes we don't diagnose it at all or we treat it incorrectly. So you get two different kinds of pulmonary edema, right? So one is a flash pulmonary edema. So acute pulmonary edema or APO or whatever you want to call it. And then you have a slow developing pulmonary edema. And these are two different pathophysiologies. The slow developing one is when someone is just extremely fluid overload. This is the patient where you're going to see pedal edema and you're going to see like sacral edema and you're going to be seeing this massive fluid overload. They generally have a history of prolonged heart failure or kidney failure or something else like that where they're going to be just having so much fluid overload that it slowly just rises up into their lungs. The other kind of palm edema would be an acute palm edema and this is someone who is feeling quite fine and suddenly they can't breathe because they have a whole bunch of fluid in their lungs. That is the pressure kind of palm edema. So you have the pressure palm edema and you have the fluid overload palm edema. These are two different pathophysiologies and then they have different treatment. Yes, they both might get CPAP but they have different necessary in terms of like treatments. So the one may have hypotension and have palm edema and the one might have hypertension and have palm edema. So you're going to um, assess these and you're going to treat these very differently. A quick history lesson is that they used to treat the hypertension acute flash palm edema by putting the patient into a hot bath. This would obviously make all their peripheral veins dilate which would drop their blood pressure, which would stop the fluid from being pushed into the lungs and then they would feel better. So that is actually back in the old days, you know, when they used to roll people over barrels with CPR, they'd chuck these people into a hot bath because that would help them fix the acute palm edema. Nowadays, we give them lots and lots of nitrates. You can give them sprays under the tongue, you can set up an infusion, whatever you have. Um, we, if the patient is severely hypertensive and they are um, severely short of breath, we will give them three sprays sublingual and then we will put them on CPAP and then we will put up an IV line and we will give the nitrates IV. So we are quite aggressive at that, but we have quite a lot of APO and so we are very good at spraying the nitrates, putting on the mask and setting up the IV. Because if you put on the CPAP and then you have to keep on spraying them, you have to keep on taking off the CPAP. So then you break the seal and you lose all the lung that you have recruited. That's not what you want. So we spray three under the tongue, we chuck on the CPAP and then we put up IV line and we start the nitrate infusion. So that is pretty much the treatment for that. So we used to give these patients nitrates and we used to give them Lasix because we were like, well, there's too much fluid. So we will drop their blood pressures and we will drop their blood pressures and we will make them pee out of their fluid. So this caused patients to become hypovolemic and that caused other problems. If your patient is or has palmy edema, you need to assess whether it's a fluid problem or a pressure problem. It's very unlikely to be both. So the patient who has got a fluid overload will have pedal edema, they will have a history of heart failure, all these things, and that will then lead to fluid buildup and these patients need Lasix. So the other thing to also consider about Lasix and then also listening to a chest or auscultation is that you can listen to a chest and someone can have wheezes and ronchi or rails, whatever you want to call it. So you can listen and hear wheezes and someone else can listen and can then hear rails. So I had a patient quite a while back when I was a student. And so I listened to the patient's chest and I heard wheezes. And my partner or the paramedic I was working with listened to the chest and, and she heard um, rails. So we went to the doctor and we were like, well, so which one does the patient have? And the doctor said both. The, the patient has wheezes and rails. So the doctor gave um, Lasix and we came back like half an hour later or an hour later and the rails were gone and now the patient just had slight wheezes. And so it was very interesting to see that a, a patient doesn't necessarily have one or the other, they can actually have both. And so with that fluid overload, we're going to be giving Lasix. If they are hypotensive, we are going to put a inotrope on. I have made videos on inotrope, very interesting. So you can set up a norepiadrenaline or you could set norepiadrenaline. You could set up a norepi infusion or a epi or adrenaline infusion, whatever you have. 
for a hypertensive um, pulmonary edema patient because their heart is not able to move the fluid around properly or they might be hypertensive or normotensive and in which case you're going to be treating these patients slightly differently but in a fluid overload you need to fix the fluid problem and you need to remove fluids patients with acute pulmonary edema with like flash pulmonary edema they may actually be um, a little bit hypovolemic so you might even have to give them some fluid but you must focus on dropping pressures and remember to not drop the blood pressure more than like 25 percent of its original or this is like 15 to 25 percent of its original pressure because if you're dropping it too far you might cause hypoperfusion of the rest of the body and we don't want that so guys i hope you enjoyed this short little video and we shall see you in the next bye for now